Are you ready to discover who you came here to be? Welcome to the Human Design and Astro Club podcast. Human Design is a system and a tool that is here to empower you and show you your greatest potential. Come learn with us and discover who you really are. Hi friends, Crystal here. Now, before we dive into this episode that I know will be providing you a lot of value and support, we wanted to share with you how we can support you off the podcast because we have a few new opportunities cooking in my kitchen and also that Leah has selected in her market. So the first offer is what we've had for a little while, which is a free guide on tips and tricks to honoring your strategy and authority. Now, if you've had a hard time understanding what your strategy is, if you've had a hard time understanding how to honor your authority and use it in your everyday life, you're going to want to head to the show notes down below and pick up this free guide. Now, our next offer is our language manual, and this is called your user manual to your true self because it reveals with you how to understand the language in human design, how to understand the key terms and the dense information in human design. We have a lot of images that give descriptions and allow you to follow your chart and learn how to use this language in your everyday life. And you can pick that up in the show notes down below. Now, our next offer is our mini classes on the four transformations, which are the variables in human design that help lead you on the path to purpose and help you better understand your process and how to get to where you are going in life. Now we have bundles with this and also a la carte classes on determination, cognition, and environment. And you can pick those up in the show notes down below. And we will be starting a variable intensive. We are super excited about this. So excited, which will be a five week program on every single variable. And we are going to be doing a hands on approach with this, where we'll be guiding you through the classes in depth week by week, and you will get access to every single guidebook and workbook for life. Yes, you heard that right. Please look out for our wait list soon as this will be starting in October and there will be limited spots to this intensive. Now, we also have another class, brand new. This is brand new, you've heard it here first, that there will be a three-part 
series on 2027. Yep, I know everyone's interested in this class. Three live Zoom classes recorded, and it's going to be on the 2027 mutation that we are all entering into. And the first class will be on August 22nd for a limited time only for the live classes. Please feel free to head to the show notes for more detail and to register for the class. Now we also have our 2022 energy forecast. Now we started at the beginning of the year. We went through all the major players that are happening in 22 and we talk about them through the lens of human design, astrology, and tarot. And you can pick that up in the show notes down below. Now, speaking of energy forecasts, we have a really big opportunity for you guys, especially you listeners that have been listening to us week after week with the program and the transit updates that we've been going through. So we've created a monthly bonus exclusive, okay? This is called the program exclusive, which is going to be bonus material on the transits and more. And you'll also be getting a worksheet with this each month where we're going to talk about the gates and channels in detail for each month, as well as um, a few other things that we'll, we'll let you guys know about soon. So definitely pay attention. It'll be coming out in September. Make sure you are subscribed to our email so you can join that immediately. Now we also have nurture your child through their design. This is a class that we did, a free class that we recorded that we have decided that we're going to make a whole guidebook for. And you'll be able to pick up the recording as well as the guidebook. And we're going to be going through all the types through the lens of a child. And then we're also going to be giving you nervous system regulation through the variables. We've come up with a few ways that we've been working with our children with this, and we wanted to share it with you. So please pay attention to this com- coming out late August. Now, If you've been wanting to work with Leah and I one-on-one, if you enjoy how we explain human design, astrology, and tarot, I do the human design portion and Leah does the tarot portion and we both do one-on-one readings. So if you would like to get a reading, you can head to our website in the show notes down below and book a reading with us. Now I'm going to start, stop talking about all this stuff and I'm just going to let you guys get into it. Feel free to reach out to us. We love hearing from you and go ahead and listen to this next brand new episode. See you over there, friends. Welcome to the Human Design and Astro Club podcast. I'm Crystal. And I'm Leah. And this is the podcast you've been waiting for. I was trying to work on my dance moves. Yeah, Leah's been practicing for all, for all five YouTubers. I've been laying on the couch all day just to get enough energy to dance for the podcast tonight. Oh, yeah. I don't buy that, but it's okay. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> if you hear my high sound, tiny human in the background, it's because he's in the other room and he has a very loud high-pitched voice i will say it and i'll say it till the end of time nobody talks about this the high sound people are definitely speaking an octave higher than literally everybody else and Mm -hmm. every low sound person is speaking an octave lower than everybody else and it's the fucking truth you can come for me if you want i don't care go listen now that i told you this you will not be able to hear anything else any high sound person that I've ever read for always like speaks at a very high volume. I'm like, hmm, my calm determination, but it's fine. I know it's, but you know, what? it's so nice to know this now yeah. because then I can just allow it to be what it is instead of being like annoyed about it. Mm-hmm. Like my wide Valley's husband buying a drum set and literally pounding away at them hour after hour for the entire day, I now know how much he does not work. Um, (laughs) All this time you think that he's slaving away at his desk, like typing Virgo, fixing problems. Yeah. Being guilt. Yeah. No, he, 
he seems to have a lot more time on his hands than I thought he did. <laughs> um, or he seems to be carving out a lot of time for this. Um, we did get into a little 59.6 moment. Um, and I was like, I literally can't take this anymore. I was like, and I tried to be super nice about it because here's the thing. When you have the awareness about the other, it's important. It, it's a disservice to yourself and for them to not support them in who they actually are. And so I will say, because I know this about him, because he's low sound and he is valleys, everything for him is connected to the acoustics. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've always known this about him. It was a very apparent before I even found human design and just, it just shows how much human design is real for me and how much confirmation it gives for who we are. And so I was like, I want you to be happy. I looked him in the eye and I said, I want you to be happy. He goes, no, you don't such a fucking Virgo. I'm like, <laughs> listen, I want you to be happy. I know that this like nourishes your soul. Okay. Like, and he's like, it does. I was like, I fucking know. Okay. And I was like, but we need to figure this out because you're making me miserable because I have calm determination, which has a very, um, like, I don't even know how to put, there's no real words. We have a high sensitivity to any sort of sound happening in our environment. It's like nails on a chalkboard a lot. And so I like, I can't listen to rap music Anytime I hear some sort of banging, like I'm immediately distracted. Um, that's why it's a big thing. It's us. Calm touch uh, or touch is circumstantial. It's, it depends. My, the way I take in information and food depends on circumstance, depends on what is actually happening in my environment. So I need to control the set, especially because I'm left, left brain. I'm active, direct left brain where I need to be controlling the sound. And because I have no control over this, and I'm just like, my, my nervous system is like this, <laughs> like throughout the day. So he finally ordered a bunch of soundproofing stuff. I think he's only put some of it up. I hear like maybe like very subtle difference, but I don't think he has all of it up yet. And he might have to invest in more. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, if, and it's ex fucking expensive. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if you want this, I want you to want it. I want you to do it. But I, I also need to live my life. Like there's a, there, like, it's like, how can we find balance in each other's differences? Yeah. That's hard. It's tough. You start stapling like pillows to the wall or something <laughs> he's like are we gonna have to take all the insulin out of the walls and get them redone I was like if that's what it takes David <laughs> <laughs> I don't care I want him to be happy I really do I want him to be yeah. able to play the drums I put up for it I don't know how long has he had this now a couple weeks I didn't say anything up until like just the other day I've yeah. been just dealing with it but he's progressively now playing more so it's like, it seems, I think there's going to be a point where he's just playing. Like, that's the conclusion that I've come to. I'm like, are you going to like spend any time with your family? Are you going to do work? Like, are you going to go to the bathroom? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have like a bucket, like right next to him. Right. <laughs> or like the bucket underneath him. And he's just going. <laughs> so anyways, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm really good. I had um, a physical therapy appointment today and she, I had some stuff done and I've been working on this shoulder for two, a, how long, a year and a half or something. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm finally getting to the point where it's not painful. That's good. Like all the time. And yeah. now I'm like progressing, like we're working on strength instead of just trying to keep the pain away, which mm. I think is amazing. So it feels it's the way that I found this place is like the universe was like, you need to find this place and you need this to be the place that you're mm -hmm. going to go. And this is going to fix everything. Cause the moment I found them, it was accidental. First of all, I put in my email, like I'm typing on the internet, thought I found another place. And I put in my email for like a free consultation and I get the confirmation email. I'm like, this is not the place that I thought I put my email into. Like I was so right. I was just like, 
looking around, not paying attention to a single damn thing that I was doing. And I get this email and they were like, oh yeah, let's set, set up this thing. And I was like, I don't even know who you are. And I accidentally put my email in and I almost didn't even answer the phone call. Cause I was oh. like, I'm not even sure I want to like go with these people. And I ended up loving them and I won an Apple watch while I was you like, won an I, Apple watch. I won an Apple watch That's while I was there. As fuck. How did you wait a second? You should have led with that. For a raffle, I got into a raffle for like um, recommending them for other people. Oh, so I won this watch. When did you um, get it? They, they're like giving me free stuff while I'm there, and they're fixing my problems, and they're recognizing me, and it's. I want to go. I, my shoulder you know. still fucking hurts. I'm like, yeah. I keep, I keep like, you know, I hate fucking being touched, and I've been being touched for mm-hmm. like the last like twelve years, like nonstop with few breaks in between and I just I'm just tired of it I'm just like it's not it it, it's not as bad as it was last year because that was really bad because it was like all through my neck all the way down my shoulder Mm -hmm. and now it's mostly just my shoulder um and some days are better than others but it's a nagging pain that I've been living with for 12 years so yeah it's it and everything is all connected like what I'm learning is oh, yeah. like from head to toe we're all connected from our muscles and tendons and everything and when one thing starts to like my clicking jaw could be connected to my bad shoulder could be connected to my bad back oh yeah it's I like, feel it in my jaw the there's definitely <laughs> yeah. when I do feel like it open up sometimes like I can feel the release happen in my jaw yeah it's all connected it's crazy mm-hmm. yeah but hopefully I'll get the balls to find somebody else again sometime, hopefully more in the near future. But it's, I also have very limited time when I can do these kinds of things. And that, that stresses me out more to have to be, you know, as an undefined route to put myself under that time crunch, like last year when I was going for, what was it like over three months, like almost every day, like that was, um, that was a lot of pressure to like get back and like, I feel like that also interfered with my recovery because I was never in a like calm state. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe next year when I like maybe finally put Otis in something permanent. um, I don't know. Maybe that'll be the time or maybe before, or maybe it'll just, I'm just like, maybe it'll just like heal on its own. Go away. Yeah. Or like, I don't know. Like I, I feel like, Otis definitely re-injured my shoulder because it was not this bad since the very beginning. Like it was just like, it got, it got to a point where there was like subtle pain happening, but not super consistently. And it wasn't so like locked. It's mm-hmm. like, um, now it's like, I'm like, and there's definitely a connection to like my rib cage out of alignment. Yep. Um, so like, I know what's hot and like, you know, I have gate 46 and I feel so, and like, I have touched in my tonal resonance. Like I feel yeah, things very deeply in my body. I know exactly what's happening. I just, and like every so often I'll like be able to release something, but there's whatever the like nucleus is, I can't get to it. Mm. I can't. Well, re- when I'm in next time, I'll ask them if they know anybody in your area. Maybe do some, do some networking for you. Yeah, I was about to say <laughs> it for me. I'm like, I don't know. I need, to, and I'm like, maybe I should try a massage again and just see if that does anything. Because there's definitely, it's like, there's, it's like parts of me is out of alignment. I also have like bulges and stuff from my accident, so that's a contributing factor. Um, but there's also, and like, I have a lot of muscle damage, and like, there's things like twisted together that if like I did have somebody that was like really strong and could like work in to the depth it could possibly unlock something but again then I'd have to find somebody to touch me um (laughs) (laughs) but my mom you would think I'm a second line body or something um but my mom she is coming into town next week for otis's birthday and she's like well maybe we can get a massage together i was like maybe the last time i did a massage with her was when i like right before i found out i was pregnant but i was pregnant um with otis 
and we went to get a massage and this I'm like I'm not like I have a defined spleen um and not that this means that you know across the board this is what happens but people that tend to have a defined spleen, they, they do have a stronger immune system um, um, because we have that support there, right? Um, people that have an open undefined spleen, they tend to have a lot of immune stuff and also skin stuff. Like I've um, done a lot of readings for people that ask me specific stuff about their spleen that are when they're open or closed. And I find that all to be so fascinating, yeah. but, and I think maybe this has to do with my tonal resonance touch, but like, um, certain oils or like products, like, even though my skin normally isn't that sensitive every so often something will be in something and I'm not even sure what it is. And I'll break out mm -hmm. very rare. Um, but whatever this person whatever this oil that this person used, there was something in it. I broke out in body hives oh, because, no. and they touched me everywhere, you know? Yeah. So all over my body, I was just having hives. And I was like, holy. And also I think because I was pregnant and your body is way yeah, more open persistent. during that time. Um, so there was a combination of things happening there, but luckily Benadryl, just like cured it immediately. But I was like, oh my God, how long am I going to have to live like this? Like people, like I, I really, and I guess we're on gate 46 right now. So we can talk about this love of the body, but like, I do have a lot of empathy and sympathy for people that have any sort of body things in any capacity. I all, whenever I see them um, and like, and I'm, and maybe they're, and I'm sure they, you know, have come to terms, not all of them, but you know, it, there, there has to be a point with our physical appearance that we have to surrender to what it is. Or I guess you could like, there's for certain situations, you can get plastic surgery. If that's what makes you feel better. I don't knock anybody for anything they do with their bodies, as long as they're not like destroying them. But even then it's their decision to make. It's not my mm -hmm. decision to tell them what to do. I can still feel feel something. I don't even know what it is. I have a completely open solar plexus, but not have judgment towards whatever decision they make. I feel like yeah. we're, we need to come to terms with that. Like we can be in more than one place. Like, I feel like that's something that I'm starting to really, especially as an undefined Ajna see and accept and hopefully help other people see is that you can feel or think or have some sort of experience for yourself that you are thinking about or have an opinion on, or maybe it doesn't even have a strong, it might not even be a strong opinion. And you can also see the other side and, and be in the both places, like see yeah. both sides and yeah. be like, I just see both sides of it. And there is one side that might feel a little more, I don't know, painful than the other or joyful than the other or whatever. And I can feel both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like sometimes like we have this conversation, my defined Ajna will come out strong and, and, but I do understand both sides too. Like I have Libra well, you're, and, and you're a projector and a projector. Like I understand everything and I get it. And I, and I also know that sometimes it comes off as like my opinion only, even though it's yeah. not true at all. Like yeah. I would love to hear everybody's side of everything. Um, I can really relate to the the body thing though, because I struggled with acne, cystic acne for years and I could never find the, the solution to it. And I finally, um, I don't know what happened. I went to see a dermatologist. They were like, you need to go on Accutane. I had a panic attack in the office. Mm -hmm. They had put me on my back and like I had to leave and drive home. And I refused to get on any medication just because my that was my spleen going, that's not correct. That was mm -hmm. like not correct. And this was way before I knew about human design. Um, but I was also in a business where I was acting as a manifester mm -hmm. or a manifesting generator. I was spending my life pretending to be something else. And the, when I let a lot of things go and I stopped trying to be somebody else and I also fixed some other things, I was trying so hard to make everything better. Um, and I made a personal choice to get rid of my IUD. 
Um, and I think that was also another factor. My oh, body yeah. was rejecting it. And since then I haven't had any issues. I have, I have some, you know, spots, hormones, that kind of stuff. But since I, I feel like I got all of that kind of in alignment and better, it's gotten a lot better. Yeah, uh, definitely the hormones in birth control. I -hmm. actually had an experience also with an outbreak on my back for a very short period of time, but it had to do with the birth control Mm -hmm. and my body does not respond well to birth control. I had Mm -hmm. to stop taking it a long time ago because I would physically get sick. I had to be on really low dosages. And then there was also, there was like weird other things happening and like mood swings (laughs) and like just so many I'm just so sensitive. Yeah. Um, I have a reflector body. And again, let me just talk about my tonal resonance being touched, like and touch is the, a sixth color. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I've always known that I feel things very, very deeply in my body. And now that I have an explanation for it, it makes a lot more sense, but yeah. I definitely experienced that too. And like, I, I, when I got asked if I wanted to have an IUD after my kids, it's like, no. I'm like, my spleen says, no, I have a defined spleen as well. It's not that my decision maker, but I do, I do, uh, I have to hear her. Like she, she's there for, she's support. She is the first support before my sacral is like, well, now we're in it. (laughs) The spleen's like, let me whisper to you and tell you softly in your ear what you need to do here. Sacral's (laughs) like, I'll let you know when it's time. Um, and that's kind of how the defined spleen and and sacral work, uh, refra, refra. Raw, raw is what, <laughs> what are words? Uh, raw speaks to um, there being splenic generators. Doesn't come up a, a lot. I've heard him talk about it in lectures. And I guess technically I'm not like a true splenic generator because my spleen is not connected to my sacral. Either someone that has like the 5027 or the 5734, that would be a splenic Hmm. consider considered a true, I guess, splenic generator, but I still consider myself to be a splenic generator because, but I just, I feel like for me, there's just a little more of a pause in between because they're not, they're not connected. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's like, I feel like for me with the way my spleen works is it, it, it tells me things way ahead of time a lot, or at least a little bit before the sacral is ready. And it's just like, it's preparing me. It's like trying to give me some sort of foundation. And I I do connect deeply to my spleen because my cognition comes from my spleen. Um, My smell is connected to the spleen. All of the cognitions are connected to a center. If you didn't know, Uh, we explain it in our cognition class. If you want to pick it up, Mm -hmm. Uh, we go into a lot of detail, but in a very um, condensed, simple way for all of our mini classes. That's why they're called mini classes because a lot of this information on the variables is very dense and hard to understand. Maybe some of you are learning from us just talking. I think I've had a few people DM me and tell me they've learned a lot from just our random conversations aside from the actual part where we talk about the transits. Um, But we don't go into a lot of detail on there. Where we will be going into detail though is going to be on our program plus monthly forecast. So these are premium episodes that we're putting out. If you're interested, um, we have more information in the description down below. You can click on, there's a form to get on the wait list and it'll give you a little bit more information. But basically if you want to understand how to actually utilize your month, how to take advantage of it, how to hack the matrix, how to understand the underlying storyline that's playing out and running through each and every one of us, but how to actually tap into it. So you can come into more of like a flow state, you know, and take some aligned action. That's a big thing that I feel like Leah and I have been experimenting with since we've been deeply into the the transits. For me, it's been a few years now, but together collectively, it's been, I guess, a year and a half or something like that. Um, And it's just really been able to make our lives easier. And that's, that's our goal is to make your lives easier. Life is hard enough just being human. (laughs) Um, and the transits are going to start fucking with us again. So we want to help you. I mean, and not in like a, I'm at the top of my mountain preaching. I'm not a fucking fifth line and I'm not, uh, 
I don't fucking know. I'm not a fucking guru. I'm not trying to be any of that stuff. I just see mutation. I see direction. I see where we can go. I see how we can really take advantage of this material world because I'm a third line and also power view, which is also a third color, um, which is connected to the third line, connected to the 3D world. And a big thing that Raw speaks about um, is that power and desire, which desire is also a third line, by the way, um, really is able to see how to be prosperous in this 3d world, because we see the density, we see movement, we see mutation, we see how things shift and change and kind of where they're then going to move towards. I've always been this way. I've always been someone that people come to for advice or for problem solving, um, desire, motivation can see where things can actually move towards. Um, I'm here to be a leader, uh, which is the scariest thing. Every time I say it, I'm like, you sound like a fucking egotistical, <laughs> crazy loon, but, and maybe I am, I don't know. I don't think you can help see people see their, their version of success. I think that's oh, like yeah. the bigger things too, is like, you want everyone to succeed. That's, oh, that's, yeah. we're all here to succeed in our own way and whatever that means for us in our life. And you help bring a lot of clarity for people, like not just through the transits and stuff, but through a lot of other avenues. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I like being my, because my defined heart is actually, uh, you know, projected. It's a projected channel for made for my little projectors, not my little projectors, but I just like, <laughs> I feel like you guys are like my delicate little bird that I just want to put pop on my shoulder and just be like, now tell me where to go. <laughs> now you tell me what to do. <laughs> but no, I do see, I do see how to help people empower people to like actually utilize their fucking gifts like what mm -hmm. are we doing just like sitting here like all of us are made with this like individual nature that no one's actually tapped into but I see it I always see it people whenever I do readings I mean I've done a few readings for you and also been helping you with the transits that like when I can spot exactly who you are I can see literally the essence of what makes up you like I can tell you then where you can move with it. Like, it's not, it, it's not like, you know, some people like to just like give the information. I tell you what to do with it after that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm built to do. Mm -hmm. And I can't see anything other than that, other than when I'm in transference <laughs> and I don't see anything. And I just sit in my dark room basement alone and cry, but that's, you know, a story for another day. <laughs> I always like to take it to like a completely different turn that nobody <laughs> wanted me to go to. That's what I do. But we do have this week is not very like active as last week. La last week was in the last few weeks have been kind of more active. Um, so I guess we can get into it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we leave an old program on Monday and enter into a new one. Um, we see all the parts of the last program, which is a focus on our bodies, right? And love and connection that has been grounding our vehicles and also played a huge role in New Moon Li Libra. I, and I, on, another thing I want to share is like, take dates that you hear for transits a little loose, okay? Because time does not exist on the other side, okay? So you don't want to be locked in so much to specific times and dates because it's really like giving you like a period of a window. Um, and there might be like a striking point with it in a way, but you might, you're not going to feel like a complete shift, like in that exact moment. So just take everything loosely. It's usually a window. There's usually a, a few days, weeks, month sometimes lasting for years, like anything with Pluto is like, you know, it's like forever. Um, <laughs> cause it does not, it's so slowly moving and I'm looking at what, uh, Oh no, that was in Saturn. It's the 61s in Saturn. Right. Um, but I'm just like, uh, Pluto anyways. Um, so we also have, I did say something. Okay. Hold on. The nodes have also shifted into the first line. 
So last week I accidentally jumped ahead because, you know, we're doing the forecast. I jumped ahead and said that we're already in the first line. Not a big, huge deal, but usually not usually when the nodes go into the first line, because they actually start out on, on the roof, if you didn't know that, but when the nodes go into the first line, that means that it's almost out meaning we're about to um, create a new background frequency. That's what the nodes do. They create this storyline in the background that it's like, it's creating this like slow movement of a new direction that we're going in and also leaving. So I just want to let you know, it's this week that we enter the first line. Um, and so um, this is allowing ourselves to in investigate what's not actually working with our old identities. Okay. So, and I've, I've, it's so, it's so interesting because I do have a defined G center and I don't have either of these gates, the one or the two. Um, so I didn't know how I was going because, you know, and they're, they're in, um, for a span of time. So you have a, you have an opportune time to really see how they're playing out, feel how they're playing out. I didn't realize how much I was actually going to feel those gates. Like my defeat, my defeat, I can't speak words. Okay. I also just did another podcast before this. So excuse me. My defined G center feels like extra right now. Like it's like move. Like it's like, this is where we're going. And I was like, oh my God, is this what people feel like with gates one and two? I'm like, or is it just because I don't have them that it's like, like extra. Um, but I just, I didn't realize because that, you know, you, when you, because I have the awareness of these gates, I might've felt some sort of pressure to them if I didn't have the awareness, but, um, not understood, you know what I mean? But now that I do know what they actually mean and I have the awareness of them. And because I, I, I seem to have, and we, and we all seem to have this interesting focus on identity and direction right now. Right. Um, so I just, I found that to be fascinating because a lot of times pe when people talk about transits in relation to human design and they say that if you're, you have a defined center and like there's a hanging gate in transit during that time that you might not feel it or whatever, but I do, I do, I really feel it. So I just wanted to say that. So there's, this is also with, with the nodes, it's what no longer feels like us. So we can finally move forward because this is, these are direction gates in the, in the G center, the one and the two. Um, so our new focus that will begin either late Monday or early Tuesday is inviting us to investigate what's not working. Can we intuitively see from our past mistakes, what needs to be corrected? And we are being grounded in our mind in the sense to be open to what can be to achieve harmony. This might require for us to adapt uh, to a new uh, self-discipline, which makes sense as we just, um, started a new season of Libra that is inviting us to refocus our relationships, love and balancing the scales. So, um, briefly at the end of Thursday, we will have a chance of, uh, prosperity. I'm excited about this one. I always get excited when this channel comes in. So we're gonna have a chance of prosperity and a potential movement with the North node and the moon connecting and providing us a pathway to abundance great day to take stock of where you want to create movement and co-create with this material world and a chance in direction could occur. You might have a spontaneous sense as we move into the final stages of the nodes. It's offering us a chance to investigate our potential direction. Um, we also have Venus moving into Libra, which brings a lot of harmony because it does rule Libra. So this, there's a nice synergy happening here, harmony happening here because it's, it's in its, its home planet. So this is a great time to engage in partnership in, in some sort of way. And I have a feeling, um, a loose one, cause I have an open solar plexus, but more of a sense, I guess it's more of an instinct when I, sometimes I, cause the solar plexus and the spleen are connected, right. And they're mirrors of each other. So, and it is, the spleen is the feel good center. It tells you like, ew, this feels yucky or, oh, this feels really good. Right. So sometimes I'm speaking about my spleen when, uh, and it sounds like I might be speaking about actual feelings, but I'm speaking about what feels good in my body. I guess if that makes a little bit more, 
more sense, but I have an instinctual intuitive knowing um, that I think a lot of people might be forming new relationships in this next month. Um, and I don't know, people, you know, people, it, people are either getting together right before the hol- holidays or they're breaking up. They're like, bitch, I don't want to buy you a, a gift. <laughs> you know, it's true. The worst are, is, is, um, excuse me, I'm going to say it. Those assholes that break up with you, like either like the day before the holidays or like, cause I mean, I, I'm not going to speak, I'm Jewish and I'm also half Christian. So I, I try to make sure I'm being equal to people because most people just wish me a Merry Christmas. And I'm going to tell you, it's kind of rude, (laughs) especially my husband finds it more rude because he's just actually Jewish, like pure. He's a pure Jew. You can, you would tell. Um, I'm, I'm not afraid to say this. Um, we also have, uh, I just realized I think Rosh Hashanah to all my, my little Jewbies, I can call you that because I'm Jewish um <laughs> i don't care come for me um anyways you're you're we're cut from the same cloth what do you want me to tell you anyways um i believe that's on monday um and that rosh hashanah means head of the year so it's actually the jewish new year kicks off the jewish new year uh we use the lunar calendar so that's why the dates are never the same for the jews if you were interested in knowing um, and that's, that's the majority of the week. It's not, there's nothing too major happening. Um, but there's, you know, there's always something happening. Hmm. That sounds like a very nice Potential. breath of fresh air. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I feel like Maybe. that's what Libra season is kind of. Yeah. It's like the calm before the storm, which is Scorpio. Yeah. Scorpio yeah. Is the storm. Well, we're out of that, that emotional wave too. the collective emotional wave is out anyway for a moment for a moment it's always for a moment we get we get break technically it was like what two weeks ago when we post this i don't know time doesn't matter yeah yeah and i i mean i'm i'm gonna be i i think because uh that six is coming into a couple parts i believe next week i'll be operating as emotional and you're permanently emotional for five years forever So if you, I mean, if you have a hanging gate in the solar plexus that, or on the other side, and then it comes into the solar plexus, then you might be individually operating as an emotional for a period of time. Um, but maybe not collectively, but it is interesting when we do collectively all become emotionals because you can tell. You can tell. Yeah. I can, I start to notice when I am in a wave of either it's like the gate connecting or it's like the full one. And I just forgot that it was coming that day or whatever. Um, is like, I'm like, why is everyone pissing me off? (laughs) Or like, why am I so irritable? And like, why is that blade of grass over there making me angry? Like staring at me funny. It's calling me names. That chicken did that thing. Like every, like I'll drop my coffee. You know, like things will just start to go weird. And then I'm like, I go on to look at the transits. I'm like, oh, see, it's okay. Yeah. I don't need to be dramatic. I can just let it be, let it flow, let it go. The one I'm in night right now is forever and always, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um. So. It's really interesting. I was taking notes as you were talking because when I was shuffling the tarot deck, this card fell out of the deck. It was like, you need me right now. Um, And it's the star. And this um, was, what did I say? It was going along with the nodes changing. So basically the star is letting go of what no longer serves us. So there's two different cups that she's pouring from what no longer serves you. And when you're nourishing back into the earth, so you're creating new from your old Um, and the seven stars around the white stars here are the seven chakras and the left hand, I don't know which way, I guess she's facing the one pouring into the earth. The left hand of the star is your subconscious and the right hand is your conscious, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so I'm not sure how to... Wait, what did you just say? The left hand is the subconscious and the right hand is the conscious. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Listen, okay. No, listen, hold on. I'm going to tell you guys a little Kabbalah secret. If you didn't probably didn't know probably has to do with it so go yeah it does that's what 
so I, so the left hand is the receiving hand mm-hmm. which makes sense body open body. receptive right yeah. our body is the receptive part of us so it is connected to the unconscious Mm -hmm. and then the right part of us is the more masculine part of us which is the conscious which is movement which is evolution right so that's what makes sense and that's why in kabbalah so i have on if you're watching uh, all five of you on the youtube channel if you can see (laughs) right now i have to make fun of myself if you can if you can see right now i have this weird little red string on me and it has these weird little knots it's actually I think it's six knots. Now I forgot the number. I think it's six. Now I have to go check. Because I want, part of me wants to say seven. But it might be six. And I want it to be six because of the six lines. Now I don't remember. I'm going to have to check. Because um, it comes with like a whole prayer that you have to do. I, ha- I had my manifestor child on my hand for me. Um, because it's... So we're receiving from others through our um our hand for through our, our left the left part of our body right and so you we often will take on other people's negativity right mm-hmm. and so this red string actually uh wards off evil eye it absorbs it actually and so after it's done absorbing all of the evil eye that people give you it then falls off and then it'll just fall off it'll get really thin and it'll just fall off and then you usually do it again um i'll I'll tell you though like i do believe in this i don't believe in every little thing and i don't believe in every little thing with kabbalah either like i'm very like this feels good in my spleen and this doesn't but i'll tell you guys there's nothing like getting a red string tied to your wrist there's something it's like something starts circling your aura when that prayer is happening. And it's like putting this like almost like secure bubble over you. It's the strangest feeling because I was feeling a lot of evil eye on the internet, which is so interesting. Here comes my spleen. It told me to put the red string on right before uh, my, that real went viral. Hmm. Where people are still saying hateful things to me, by the way, just so everybody knows. Um, but it's okay. I'm just deleting them as I see them. I might have missed some because they're happening so fast, but I'm just like, whatever. I'm like, it's not my problem, whatever these people are saying. Um, but it's just so interesting that I did that, like literally, like probably like a week before. I was like, I like I'm feeling evil eye, like I'm feeling like I'm gonna really need this because I don't know. And it's not just like I'm being like hocusy pocusy, okay? Like there is legit energetic frequencies that are surrounding this and I don't know how to explain it like there's a whole prayer involved there's like this red string is being wrapped around Torah's inside a cave like it's a whole it's a whole process for this to whole all of it to happen um so so yeah I I don't know I'm sorry I went on a whole <laughs> tangent if you didn't gather any of that it's okay you, then I guess you didn't need to Or listen to it again and maybe you'll get it. I'm not sure. But anyways, in a very long-winded version, your answer was yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's confirmation. Um, There's – so then uh, what else was I going to say? So you were talking about the nodes changing. And so, like, what this is is, like, about change. So not what you said, what no longer feels like us or what no longer feels – right for us. Um, the star card asks you to say out with the old in with the new, um, because the, this card is about fertility and nourishment and getting back to your body. I mean, she's naked on the shore, one foot on land, one foot in the water. And this is about coming back to that, like self coming back to you and your essence of who you are. And, letting go of the things that don't serve you anymore. And I feel like maybe that's pretty accurate with what you were saying about your red um, string, you know, like not allowing other people's negativity into your life and just pouring into yourself. Because when you pour into yourself, I know this kind of sounds cliche, but pouring into yourself, you can pour into others. If you're always empty, how can you be there for other people or how can you help guide them or whatever all the things that you know you're here to do you can't do those things if you're just flat and you haven't done that for yourself so 
I feel like with the nodes changing, it's really a lot of good energy coming potentially. I mean, obviously this isn't going to happen. I, I'm not saying this is what's really going to happen, but potentially there is, you know, this could be a good time to shed some old layers. It could be a good time to let go of some things that aren't, aren't working for you anymore and pouring into yourself and nourishing yourself. Um, and then the second card I chose or that chose us, I guess, is the priestess. And this has a lot to do with direction that you were talking about, because it says, how are you being called to step up and lead? And I didn't look it up before. There she is. Okay. The priestess is a teacher dedicated to service, freedom, and leadership. You don't need to have it all together to lead. In fact, it does. It helps if you don't. No one wants a perfect angel who hasn't made any mistakes. Let your life be your message. Don't underestimate the power of sharing your story. It's by hearing someone else's journey that we feel less alone. We realize that we're actually all in this thing called life together. The difference between a follower and a leader is that a leader has the courage to go first. In stepping out, they shine a light on the path for others to, to venture forward. Don't fret too much about trying to work out who is your tribe, and don't get stuck in age, income, hobbies, or occupation. The best way to discover your tribe is to look in the mirror. If you feel called to lead, chances are it's because at some point in your life you longed for someone to lead you. Your tribe are longing for exactly the same thing as you were and are and might only be one step behind you. Hell, they might even be right along beside you. You don't need anyone's permission, just the courage to stand up. Embrace your struggles, the peaks, the troughs. You don't need to know the way, just believe that there might be a different one. Your tribe is waiting for you, so step forward so they can find you. I feel like that car was written for me. I know I always <laughs> say that. I'm such an Aries moon. I'm not going to stop. Yeah, there's for all the power view, for all the desire, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really want to tell all the desire people because I know a lot of them are just like sitting on the sidelines and they think that they don't have anything to offer. I feel like that's a huge transferred innocence thing is like, well, nobody wants to hear what I have to say or nobody cares what I think or Someone any else of that. Will lead. Somebody else will lead. I said that for a long time. I think that's like a big thing that I like where I do understand the the... I know it's becoming a buzzword in the or buzz phrase in the human design community, but it really is true. Um, I, maybe you haven't heard it. I don't know because I know you try to like stay out of everything. But uh, <laughs> the no choice. Ra talked about it a, a lot of his lectures where he called it no choice, and it's like it's basically in a nutshell what he's saying is no choice but to be correct, no choice but to be who you are. Um, we really have no choice. Um, we do have free will to go against who we actually are. If we choose. Um, but there really is no choice, but to be yourself, especially once you become, when you, when it becomes your, into your awareness, it's like, you really then have no choice. That's, that's more so when you have no choice, it's like, well, now I know exactly who I am. So I can't actually continue on being blinded um these leaves in the wind are blowing pretty hard I feel like they're trying to talk to me they keep nuzzling against my window anyways um it's distracting with my left brain and mind um but anyways what was I saying um oh that you that like I feel like I really and I know this is and like, I'm like, at this point, I feel like once you, once the defined hearts, like let their ego out, like then everybody just thinks they're like egotistical, but I'm really not, I'm really not. And I'm not trying to be, and I know part of me already is, so I might as well just do it. You know what I mean? Um, but I don't feel like I have a choice in what I'm doing with this. Like I felt called to come online to share this. Like it would be so much easier. I tell myself all the time, so much easier just to sit on the sidelines and, yeah. and somebody else can take over. But I've, I remember the day that I came online, I said, if I can, you know, change one person's life that really needed to see who they are so that they can finally love themselves again, then 
my mission here is complete. And that's how I knew I was supposed to be here. Um, and so I feel like I don't have a choice. It's, 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 I want to be here because I'm called to, I'm not here because I want to, if that makes sense. I don't know if that sounds weird or whatever, but like, I really feel, and I feel like every desire motivation is being called. And especially now, as we're at the last bits of the old programming here with the cross of planning as it's shattering. Mm -hmm, And I see very much so where we're going. That's why I had to put out the 2027 class and why I had to get you to like, you know, like we're, we're fucking doing this. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But then after we, we, I mean, we, we have one more class left. It'll be done by the time this comes out, but, um, you know, we have one more class left, but I feel like now that you've heard the bulk of it, you're like, Oh, I, that is kind of important. Um, I know it's how it doesn't sound important because we do have, you know, like five more years. And even after that, who knows that the length of period of time when things are really going to start unfolding, I guess. Um, we don't, we won't know until we get there, but I'm, I'm at least happy that I'm prepared for what my role is going to be. Um, yeah. and how I can help that's that's what I feel like desire and also guilt (laughs) so we're here to help we see what needs to be fixed we see what needs to be moved we see what needs to be shifted um and it's like shame on us for not doing it for not at least trying yeah I think we're both here for that yeah that's why we found each other it's like (laughs) fuck we're stuck (laughs) we're we're in the fractal we're in the penta we just need like i don't know three more people (laughs) (laughs) but i mean this is your time to finally let go of places that you thought you had to hold on to Mm -hmm. and most likely because we haven't actually we're in the past guys so we haven't experienced the eclipse yet For both of us, it's probably going to be some sort of shattering may or may not be immediate. Um, and I'm sure it'll shift and change as time goes on because eclipses bring uncertainty. They bring chaos. It's very like, there could be a lot of turbulence, but there's also a lot of beauty that can come from that. So and all of its beauty, really all of its love. Yeah. It's like shedding. You know what I also realized is the star is the card after the tower. so like there's the shattering or the tower needs to fall you know you can't build Mm -hmm. anything on a crumbly foundation no it has to go away it has to crumble and fall in order to build new it always does even if it's painful and a lot of times any pain is necessary because that's the only way we're actually going to learn and create change yep (sighs) boy have i learned that um (laughs) Not to bring it, I'm, I'm never like actively trying to bring it back to me. You have to understand I'm an Aries moon and I'm a fucking million other things. We're not going to get, or I'm <laughs> constantly giving you guys my information that I don't know if you actually care. Um, but anyways, <laughs> we hope that you have a great week. Yes. Um, and I guess we'll uh, see you over there on the next one. We'll see ya. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Crystal and I are really here as defined hearts to provide value to you with our unique insights. If you have found any of this episode valuable to you, we ask that you share with a friend, tag us with a highlight on Instagram, and write us a review so we can reach more people. Human design and astrology are tools to guide us toward our transformation. You are a unique and beautiful being, and we encourage you to let that light inside of you shine bright. See you in the next episode, friends.